Right, two ducks on a pond, and they're twins. Let's say one will always be what's called spin up, and the other spin down. You know for a fact that if you measure duck one, and its position is up, duck two will be fixed in the opposite state. What's weird is that you could do this experiment across the pond, across the world, across the galaxy, and measure one duck, and the other duck will always take the opposite spin position. What just happened? Quantum mechanics made no sense at all. First, you have the notion that particles can coexist as waves. Then, you have the idea that the wave function of the system collapses upon measurement. In the 1920s, scholars were not convinced by quantum mechanics and subsequent series of events led them to think that quantum mechanics was either incomplete or downright lunacy. At the time, the scientific community was divided into three factions. The realist view that the physical state of the system actually has the attribute prior to measurement. Orthodox shared the view that the act of measurement actually created the property, while the agnostics were like, meh, everything is metaphysical anyway. The realist belief that quantum mechanics is still an incomplete theory. Even if you know about all quantum mechanics has to tell you about the system, you still could not determine all its features. In 1935, Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen published the EPR paradox a thought experiment to prove that the realist position was the only sustainable one. Einstein sought to dismiss quantum entanglement as it contradicted with the principle of locality. In other words, the principle that information could not travel faster than the speed of light, and in his own words, coined entanglement as Spukhafte Fernwirkung, or in English, spooky action at a distance. So what is the EPR paradox? As explained by David Bohm, consider two people, Sungon and Wichar, each at opposite ends of a galaxy and separated by 20 light years. At the center of the galaxy, a neutral pi meson decays into an electron positron pair, and each traveling directly towards Sungon and Wichar at the speed of light. Now, as the pion has zero spin, by the conservation of angular momentum, if the electron is found to have spin down, Postron must have spin up. Ten years later, Wichar measures the electron and gets spin up. Immediately, Wichar realizes that Sungon, who is 20 light years away, gets a spin down. To the realist, there's nothing surprising because indeed the electron has spin up and the positron has a spin down from the moment they were created. But for the orthodoxist, the electron wave collapsed at the instant Wichar conducted the measurement. To the scientist, this was nonsensical, as this would mean that information would have propagated faster than the speed of light, thus violating the principle of locality. However, English physicist John Stuart Bell provided a staggering proof that any local hidden variable theory was incompatible with quantum mechanics. So here's how it goes. Bell suggested a modification to the EPR thought experiment. Instead of orienting the electron and the positron detectors along the same direction, he allowed them to rotate independently. The first detector measures the spin of the electron in the direction of unit vector A, while the second measures the spin of the positron along the direction of unit vector B. Along the direction in question, each detector registers the value positive 1 for spin up, negative 1 for spin down. A table of results for the many pi meson decays might look like this. Bell proposed to calculate the average value of the product of the spins given the set of detector orientations. We call this average p. If both detectors were parallel, then we would get the product of negative 1. However, if they were anti-parallel, then every product becomes positive 1. We can now generalize that the average value of p is now the negative of the dot product between a and b. Bell's argument was simple. Assume a local hidden variable lambda exists. Some function a with arguments vector a and lambda exists and gives the result for the electron measurement. Now some other function b with arguments vector b and lambda also exist. 
both functions take the value positive or negative 1. When the detectors are aligned, the results are perfectly anti-correlated, like this. So now, the average of the product of measurements is the integral of function a, b, and the normalized probability density of the hidden variable. Let us call it rho. Using the previous anti-correlation, we get this. Now, for any new orientation of the detector C, we find the difference between the average value of AB and AC. Then, when we consider that the product of both functions A and A, with different arguments AB, AC, lie between positive and negative 1, we get the final Bell's inequality. So let's say A and B are perpendicular and C makes a 45 degree angle to A and B on a single plane. Using the previous theory that the average value registered by detectors in different alignments A and B was the negative dot product of vectors, we prove that the local hidden variable theory is inconsistent with Bell's inequality. With Bell's modification, the EPR paradox drives us to a far more disturbing conclusion. If the scientists were right, then not only is quantum mechanics incomplete, it is downright wrong. On the other hand, if Bell was right, then no hidden variable theory is going to explain this non-locality Einstein found so preposterous, although subsequent experiments to test Bell's inequality in the 60s and 70s did astoundingly agree with quantum mechanics, but were also clearly incompatible with Bell's inequality. Contrary to what many believed, Bell did not prove that hidden variable theories did not exist, but what he did do was give a significant upvote to the orthodox view of quantum mechanics by ruling out local hidden variable theories as a viable explanation for quantum mechanics.